Hey, Bikeaholics, Ryan Erlacher here, lawbindingbiker.com. Thanks for checking back in. That's right, we're gonna install a set of Vance and Hines short shots staggered. Um, we're actually doing this particular project on a Dyna, 2016 Dyna Lowrider S, uh, but it's gonna be very uh, uh, useful for any you know Dyna or soft tail model that you may put, be, be putting these particular pipes on, guys. With that said, let's get wrenching, let's get our hands dirty, huh? Before we get our hands dirty, don't forget to check out all our free videos to help bikers out there on our YouTube channel and over on our website. All right, first thing to remove this exhaust is a half inch that he's gonna work on. And that just holds these two pipe stock headers on this Dyna Lowrider S together. Every exhaust comes on a little different, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Up at the headers, they're all the same. All right, that bolt's out of the way. All right, and with a 9 16 wrench, he's working on that other one that just attaches it to the frame. The muffler's here. All right, and he's got that done. He'll pull that out of the way. All right, and with a 9 16 he's got a uh, socket there. There's a top muffler clamp that clamps the mufflers to the headers, and there's a bottom one too, because we've got top over bottom duals on this thing. So he's working on the bottom one now. It's the same kind of clamp. All right, and that, that's the bottom clamp there, 9 16 same thing. Just loosening that up so we can get these mufflers off. One little trick, because these mufflers can get tight, especially if they've been on a long time, but it's just to take a screwdriver and get it in between your clamp there and just make sure we did it, but we spread those clamps out. Um, and then you just kind of got to tug from the rear. All right, and this takes just a little muscle, guys. See how he's just working it up and down, side to side. Some pure old muscle to get these things off. There we go. So if you do need to lube them, guys, this right here is where you'd want to spray it, WD-40 or something right up here where the headers or the mufflers go right over the headers. That can help, especially if the bike's a little older and they're really welded on there. He's going to start working on this rear one now. Or top one, I should say. There we go. Top and bottom exhaust mufflers off. Now we just got the header system that will disconnect. Okay, moving on up, we're going to look at the rear header. You'll see up in there the flange, and you'll see two half inch nuts on there on the studs where the headers go into the motor and you'll see the oxygen sensor too we're going to have to remove all those so that's what we're going to be working on helps to have sockets and extensions for this rear one so you can get up in there and then we'll have to use a box end wrench basically to get that oxygen sensor off so that's what rick's going to be working on now all right with his 9 16 he's just taking that oxygen sensor and backing it out All right, and Rick's just working on those two half inch nuts up there on the flanges. You can see he's got a ratchet extension. All right, and just working on the bottom one now. Again, half inch sockets what he's got. All right, and you'll see he's got the bolts backed off. That's just a metal flange and that just will slide down around the exhaust now like so. All right, moving down the front header here, he's working on the oxygen sensor there. On the front header, 9 16 box end wrench again is what he's using. All right, and he's just loosening the heat shield a little bit. Uh, you can see the hose clamps on the back side of this, only because it's gonna be very difficult to get a ratchet or a socket, I should say, up and get that half inch. So he's still just working on getting this front heat shield out of the way. He loosened enough, so it looks like he can get his socket up in there now. All right, and you see that front flange, you're just breaking that free real quick off the studs, and that's kind of gonna free up his entire exhaust system. Takes a little tweaking. There you go, header system off. So there's three bolts, half inch, and this is the stock exhaust uh, support bar. You gotta get rid of it because these Vance and Heinz short shots come with a new support system. So we're gonna get this out of our way. All right, you got the last one out of there and we'll get this again, stock support bar out of our way. So with a quarter inch, we've gotta remove this stock quarter inch ratchet, uh, I should say hex head. It's kind of below the transmission cover there. They want that removed because the bracket's actually gonna bolt in there in a moment. All right, just getting that out of the way. Okay, so here's what we're gonna use to get this bracket. He's gonna show you how that's kind of gonna fit up in there. This is the aftermarket Vance and Heinz bracket as usual. Paper instructions suck and Vance and Heinz instructions suck on this and they're behind the curveball because this is a 2016 Dyna Lowrider S. 
and uh, what they say in their instructions is not going to work. So we've uh, made do with the hardware that they've put in the kit. And you'll see down there we've got one longer bolt that come in the kit, two shorter bolts, and then some washers and a spacer. And he took that longer bolt, he put a washer on it, and then he's putting the black spacer on it. He's going to apply a little blue Loctite to it. And then that's going to bolt into that top hole right there. He's going to get that finger started. Now he's going to use the shorter bolt. He's got blue Loctite on it. That's where we took that transmission bolt out originally. They wanted us to reuse it at the top, but it's too short. So that's why we're making adjustments. Then he's just going to get this started too. We'll tighten everything down in a minute. All right, he's got a washer in that shorter bolt. And he's going to put that right in the center there. There was just kind of a stud originally there. You just have to get that out of your way. And now with a half inch socket, he's just tighten all three of these down. Okay, so we're up at the front head. And these are just the stock Harley crush gaskets, basically. And you can just pull them out. We worked it a little bit with a screwdriver first. That's how they come out. And then he's going to show you the new ones that came with his Vance and Hine kits. They're a little bit different. They're not the crush washer type. But you can reuse those crush washers if you want. But this kit came with these new gaskets. So he's going to go ahead and install that new Vance and Heinz gasket up in there. Just seat it up in there, pretty easy. We're gonna do that for the front and back head, of course. And again, I've stalled many exhausts and just reused those crush washers, but just take a look at how they look if they need to be replaced. All right, on these pipes or circlips, we gotta reuse these. And the easiest way to do this, guys, is sometimes you can do it with two guys, but just grab some needle nose and tweak that thing up over the lip. Sometimes you can pin them down on the floor. Again, if two hands helps, you can do it that way. You gotta get it up over that lip like he's doing and just work it around. All right, just worked it around with those pliers just with some force and there we go. Got it off, we're gonna reuse those and the flanges. He's just using some needle nose, just kind of bending the, those circlips can get bent up a little bit. Just kind of bend it into place. You can put it on a flat floor and bang it with a hammer if you need to too. Hopefully you're enjoying the video. If you wanna make sure that content and these free videos keep coming your way, there is a way you can support us. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. The community is growing over there. We'd like to have you involved too. Um, there's no risk over there. You can sign up for a certain level um, and pay a certain amount per piece of content with a cap. Absolutely no risk. There are some benefits over there. Um, T-shirts and a private Facebook group and some premium content, all depends on what level you sign up as. But that is a way that you can assure the content keeps coming your way. Lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Of course, if you ever wanna just leave a flat donation, we do accept that too and appreciate it. Lawabidingbiker.com slash donate. Don't forget to check out that weekly podcast, guys. It's on fire. A ton of content we're putting out. Get involved over there. It's a Law Abiding Biker podcast. All right, let's get back into your video. So your kit comes with two different size hose clamps, many of them. It's got a larger one and then a smaller one. That's The larger ones are for the larger part of the diameter of the pipe where it flares up. Those are gonna go in the back. Then you've got the smaller ones for the smaller portion of the pipe. And so we're just gonna start taking these apart and feeding them through the uh, channels and the heat shields. That's what he's working on. All right, so he fed his first one through there, a small one, of course. They just go through the channels like so. And you just gotta take each one of these apart with a screwdriver. Spread it apart, and then just work it through the channel. It's gonna go around and do that. All right, so now we're putting the flanges back on. Make sure you have them the right way, so they're facing the heads right. And then you're just gonna work his circlips back on, and you kind of work them the same way. You can use pliers to just kind of bend them around, and you're basically just forcing them back on over the lip of the head pipe there. All right, you got that first sure clip on. Just take some force and his flange is on right. We'll do that to the other one. Let's take a look at these short shots inside, guys. Uh, all you have, I'll try to lighten it up for you there, is metal baffles in there, guys. And so they're going to be super loud. And then if you even wanted them crazier loud, which you would have zero back pressure, your bike, it's not the best for performance, but you can take this one bolt out up there and you slide those metal baffles right out and they're completely straight pipes then. But again, not recommended for performance reasons. All right, so we've got the heat shield, all the clamps. Some would think, and sometimes it can, but the, 
With these kind of heat shields and pipes, sometimes it's easier, guys, just to put the heat shields on before the pipes go on the bike. Uh, it's just easier to manipulate everything like you see he's doing instead of having to fight with the bike and stuff. And we'll just get all these heat, these clamps just started, basically. I'll just set everything down in there, and that's how we're going to proceed is getting the heat shields kind of started at least. We'll finish tightening them down when we get it up on the bike and get everything adjusted. That's what he's doing is just going around and getting each of these clamps just started with a screwdriver. Again, we'll get it all adjusted in its final position when we get it up on the bike. Now he's going to start positioning the header back up on the bike. Trying to get the flanges up over the studs there. All right, so now we've got the exhaust at least started up at the flanges, but we left it loose because we want the pipes to be able to swing out so we can get at this oxygen sensor. Remember, there's one on front and back that we've got to put back in here. And one of the tricks if you're going to do this oxygen sensor wires this way is because they'll get all twisted up, is take the wire and twist it back, you know, a couple turns and then start threading it in. So as you're threading it in, it's not just twisting it all one way. It'll kind of twist it back out straight. You want to just get everything basically finger started because there's not, you can't just wrestle these pipes around very easy. And uh, so, so make sure you just get everything hand started first. And then after you get everything aligned, including heat shields and everything, you can come around and start tightening everything down. Right, depending on your exhaust, this is just the way it goes, but this front head, front bolt can kind of be a pain. He's actually around the left side of the bike, as you can see, give you some reference there. You kind of just got to reach up in there with a box end. You can only get about a quarter turn at a time. There's no real easy way to get up in there, and we've learned this is the easiest to get over on the side of the bike he's on. And then just you can flip the box end uh, wrench back and forth, the open end wrench, and just a quarter turn at a time until you get it tightened down. All right, a few things, guys, on these... Uh header bolts and that flange. Number one, when you're tightening them, uh, make sure that you're tightening them back and forth, not just cranking one down. You know, do a couple turns on one, switch to the other one so that flange goes down flat, and then don't over tighten them. Crank them down, you know, good and tight, but uh, you don't want to snap those studs off or anything like that. Um, and then, you know, like in a month or so, ride the bike, they're going to seat a little bit, they're going to loosen up, come back in a month and give them a couple more turns. But with that gasket and everything, you're going to not have anything uh, problems with it sealing up. So those are just some tips and tricks when you're tightening those flange bolts down. All right, he's got the rear header all hooked up. Same thing, he's going to work it up in there, get the flange all adjusted, get the nuts started. All right, so he's just working on that bracket. Of course, those half inch uh, nuts go on the back or bolts go on the back side. And that's why we didn't tighten up the headers yet on this rear head because you want to have a little play. So you can get everything aligned and started first. Then you go back and crank everything down. All right, and you're just working on uh, tightening everything down now. Of course, the head bolts. And again, just be careful how tight you get those so you don't snap them off. All right, guys, of course, after you put new exhaust and that kind of stuff, you're really opening the bike up or a new breather, you've got to tune your EFI. And we strongly encourage you to use the Vance & Heinz Fuel Pack 3 electronic fuel injection tuner. Find your plug like he is right there, your CAN bus plug and the FP3 stick plugs right in. Now, to tune your bike, we have a free, very popular free video, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash fuel pack, P-A-K and the number three. And that will show you how to hook it up via Bluetooth to your phone so you can see what's going on, how to install a map, how to auto tune your bike and everything in between. It's a very uh, thorough, tutorial we did on the fuel pack three on this project we're just showing you that we're plugging it in he's marrying it with his phone and we're going to install the proper map to remap his electronic fuel injection so this bike will run right because once you, like i say once you do exhaust and stuff you really need to have that done do not pay the dealership to do their stock download it's a ripoff guys and it leaves you with zero flexibility with the fuel pack three It'll give you tons of flexibility if you want to do other things in the future to your bike. You can just simply flash it right from your smartphone. So that's what he's doing right now. And we just took the side cover off on this Dyna. It plugs in that easy. We'll find a place here to tie it up, uh, up in there. All right, guys, don't forget to clean your bike up afterwards. Get all the grease and fingerprints off. There's only one product we recommend. That's Bug Slide. Do not ride without the slide, guys. It's available exclusively in the Law Abiding Biker store, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. 
It is our number one go-to waterless motorcycle cleaner, hands down, for everything maintenance and shining and uh, putting a protective coat on your bike, getting all those greasy fingerprints off from working on it. All right, guys, and that is a set of Vance and Hine short shots installed on a Dyna. This happens to be a Lowrider S, Dyna Lowrider S, but that is how you install those short shots. They look great. If you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, you are really missing out. We have a ton of videos in the works for you guys, so get subscribed. Also sign up for the free email club, lawabidingbiker.com slash email club. We will shoot you an email when we come out with new free videos. Also, do not forget to check out that weekly podcast. It's the Law Abiding Biker Podcast. It's heard worldwide. All right, peace out.